Welcome back to the Marvel Movie Minute, a daily podcast which we disassemble a film from the Marvel Cinematic Universe into one minute segments and then examine it in obsessive and occasionally hilarious detail. I'm Kyle Olson from the Swashbuckling Ladies Debate Society podcast. Hey, and I'm Rob Cabosco and Kyle. Yes, sir. You know, when we look at the long history of humanity and our desire for peace, perhaps no moment is more notable than what happened on a day in Paris in 1896. When one Baron de Zulin found out that he had become victim of the world's first stolen car. Oh. Now, the vehicle was recovered and the thief captured, but this infamous act of thievery put forth the wheels of invention into motion. Removable steering wheels, locks, and the of club. course, the club. <laughs> oh my God, the club. <laughs> And of course, maybe most infamously, the car alarm, where we have to travel to Denver, Colorado, and a random newspaper article from 1913 Ooh. documents the tale of an alarm that would trigger when someone tried to hand crank the engine of the automobile, the inventor of what would become the peril of neighborhood peace and parking lots everywhere, <laughs> unnamed. No one knows. Wow. But <laughs> <laughs> hidden from history hidden from history probably apparent no denver colorado 1913 the first car alarm yeah i had no idea I either that's amazing <laughs> what that, like, during like just let's see that's right right before world war one yes they apparently like wanted to make sure that no one stole it like and also there there couldn't have been more than like a dozen cars i mean right in the like, town. <laughs> i mean like in 1913 and unless i'm getting my timeline wrong like you're like that was even before, like, the Model T was everywhere. Like, you could find it pretty easily, I would think. Because if you saw, if if your car, your Model A, drove away, and then next thing you saw one of your neighbors driving a Model A, wouldn't you go, hey, wait a minute. Hey, There's only on one car second. in this town. <laughs> I, mean, right? I don't, I don't understand. Oh, it's just uh, good times. Yeah. Well, there we go. Why would I be talking about car alarms? I guess we'll find out here at minute 101 (laughs) of Iron Man 2 from 2010, directors of John Favreau. Uh, And we pick up where we left off, which is uh, Tony rescuing Peter Parker? Mm. Quote, unquote. Basically, the the kid uh, who's dressed in Iron Man, he had just finished blasting away the drone who was menacing this kid, the army drone. Uh, And then he, uh, as as we come in, the, the minute starts... The drone collapses, and, they, and he, Tony says, nice work, kid, and then rockets off into the air, and we see the, the kid looking up like, well, that kid day was made. Well, that was <laughs> like, amazing. I'm going to tell everybody about this. Look what I did. Yeah. And I'm like, an Iron Man helped me. Yeah. Of course he did. Just real great shot here, though, about the CG. Phenomenally well done. Um, when the blast comes out, we, we switch back to a shot behind the kid mm-hmm. and, and Tony. And you can see they actually, when the beam hits the the drone, you can actually see it create this glowing molten crater of metal, and then it blows apart. But I love the fact that you see both. It isn't just like it hits in an explosion. No, you can actually see it like create that molten pit in the chest of the drone. Nicely done. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, and so we see uh, Tony, as, as you remember, that t- Tony's suit is powered by repulsor technology, which is why he can blast off right next to the kid and not, you know, melt the kid's face off. <laughs> because it, his, his things are propulsion without heat, you know? So, like, yeah. he takes off, you know, within inches of this kid, and the kid's fine because, like, he's not creating heat because of the repulsors. Well, how nice of you to even think of that. <laughs> Just, you know, in case people are worried. I mean, there, I'm going to get really nit- nitpicky in the next couple of minutes. Well, so <laughs> I just wanted to say this has already been accounted for. Well, you know, he does have he does have a, a, a mask on, so he'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> he might have a mask on permanently. permanently um, yeah, no. So uh, the then the chase resumes. So as soon as Tony gets back up into the air, uh, he the, basically the drones and Rhodey pick him up again, and uh, so Rhodey is still uh, uh, stuck in the War Machine armor, which is being remotely controlled by Ivan. Okay, and and one thing as there's a really nice shot of after Tony takes off, we get a shot in front of him, him rocketing towards the camera. Yeah, and we get a really great view of the expo, something we had not noticed before. Of a lot of different, obviously, coolly shaped structures, a lot of you know neon lights looks like. But there is a pavilion that we see that has a red lined lit up top. That must be the Audi pavilion. 
Tesla. Ah, uh, yes. Because yeah, if you gonna... notice, it it has the Audi rings on the top of it. Oh, I don't think we've noticed that before. No, no. And, and later, and later on in these minutes, we're actually gonna he's gonna go right past the Audi pavilion too. Right. So we can try and like coordinate that. Like as we see it from ground level, now we've seen it from the sky. We can try and you know make sure that if that's the right one. Uh, but yeah, it is a gorgeous shot of like all of them, all the entire expo laid out uh, where everyone you can see everything. Well, and it's important, too, to see um, right off the left side of the screen, then right before the shot changes to a point of view shot, we see the continent of Australia yep. because that's the unisphere, which yep. will be important. going to be important. Momentarily. <laughs> that's right. And once again, establishing a really good sense of geography. Like, yes. So you already have this thing of like you have the... I'm not using the moat. No, it's not a moat. It's a fountain. I, what is the like a reflecting pool? Re reflecting pool, exactly. Yeah, except that it's in motion, so it's a reflecting fountain. I don't know lights, but lights. yeah, yeah, it's pretty. Uh, leading up to the Unisphere, and then right behind the Unisphere is the is the central the stage where Pepper and Hammer are right now, uh, and then Tony's flying around it. So like we sort of have that that sort of I don't know exclamation point shaped area that we're going to be sort of working in over the next couple of minutes so because as we're going to go back and forth and back and forth this is going to be important uh so Rody says you got multiples coming in on you and we get to see on his on his screen he actually is watching this he's actually it's, it's interesting that the guy who's unfortunately trapped is relaying telemetry you know in real time right. to the other right. guy like like he can see like it, like when he has target lock and all those things uh to give tony a, an advantage and tony says let's get this away from the expo isn't that amazing? A hero who takes the fight away from the crowded people rather than taking it to like a downtown big, what do you call a big city? Like a, like a metropolis. Oh, um, and like yeah. having it fighting in the middle of it with all the, the things where you could have just untold amount of casualties. I mean, like this is what a hero does. They take the fight away. Oh, it took him long enough. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Wait, which movie am I rooting for? Oh, yeah, no, this one. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, divided loyalties. <laughs> I got um, confused. I got right. confused there for a second. <laughs> uh, so as as they sort of bank around, they come around the side of, of the pavilion, we get to see a bunch of banners. Okay, so there's a bunch of banners. And I have to say, this might be the most product placement we've seen so far. <laughs> because we have banners for Audi, Oracle, Coca Kodak, Dr. Pepper, and LG. All in one glorious shot. Like, there's it's, all the major advertisers <laughs> on screen at the same time. Cha-ching. Well, no, and LG gets double because they have a right. banner, and then they have a lighted sign all the way down in the distance. Yeah. Um, okay, but then there's another one. Yeah. The, there's the, one the, other thing on there. This, this green sign called Circuits Maximus. And well, I don't remember them being a major, uh, you know, contributor before. I don't think they, this is probably a place, but... It's not. It's another Iron Man Easter egg. So Circuits Maximus comes from Iron Man number 188 from November of 1984. Um, this is a point where, okay, so Obadiah Stane was a villain for Iron Man for a lot longer than he was in the first Iron Man movie. He was around for years. And so at one point, he actually had done a hostile takeover of Stark International. So Stark International was owned by Stane. And so I know Obadiah was not really quite the mentor that he was uh, to that uh, Jeff Bridges played. Uh, he was a definite rival. Uh, and so uh, at this point, Tony had stopped being Iron Man because of his drinking problems. Uh, Rhodey was actually Iron Man and having his own issues. So Tony Stark needed some place to put his ideas. And so he joined a brand new startup called, that's right, Circuits Maximus. So this is where Tony was working at the time. All, all this stuff happens. And why is it important? To here, it's like to Iron Man 2. Well, that is where he developed the Silver Centurion armor with the triangular chest plate. So oh. it's sort of like the the homage to that. So it's like that's why that particular is. Tony has had a lot of businesses over the years, but like that's why this one is on here because it's the brand. This is representing the brand new arc reactor that obviously oh. he's wearing in his chest now. Uh, so okay, so we the, so there the chase is, is has resumed. So there he goes flying away, taking the the enemies away from the crowded area. So, cut to inside the car. So, there's Happy <laughs> driving uh, the Audi. And so, Natasha uh, is getting ready for, for the next thing, whatever that is. Like, she, I, at that point, we don't even know where exactly she's going. Uh, we, they, we know that she knows. Well, actually, we do. Because Hammer told her that Ivan was at Hammer International, so she's getting Happy to drive in there. So, uh, so, now, so, now Happy knows that, too, we assume, because a conversation apparently had, has happened along the way. So... Natasha says, when we arrive, I need you to watch the perimeter. And that's when she takes her shirt off. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I was the thing is, she is actually getting ready for battle in the right. back of this car as Happy is driving. She's getting into her, you know, her shield uniform, uh, and of course, Happy is having trouble keeping his eyes on the road. So they have, there's a little comedy scene of uh, him veering into the wrong lane as he's spending too much time looking in the rearview mirror and not enough time, you know, watching the road ahead of him. Now, let's just, you've done you. I've just stood back and I wanted to see how you were going to tiptoe around <laughs> this moment. Right. Yeah. Let, let's just say something here as two men. And it goes for anybody. Yeah. Leering is never good. No, <laughs> never. Yeah, I think, we all, I think yeah. we all know this. Right. Also, we're humans. We, we understand the comedy here and the yeah. point of this. Okay. But I just want to say there's a great moment in this that I totally love in that, you know, obviously here she is and you're not seeing much. I mean, I have to say they've, they, if you're going to do, if you're going to try and walk this line, this yes. is about as tasteful as you can right up to yes. the line. And it right? was, I mean, and in terms of, let's just say of wardrobe, it was a tasteful brawl that they have. For exactly. Him. So it's no, nothing, it, totally. nothing gross or, you know, male gazy. It's just sort of like, you know, functional. It's it's the suggestion without the, you know being explicit in any way. So yes. I, okay, props to that. But here's the best part about this, John Favreau. Okay, <laughs> kudos to the acting of his eyes uh-huh. because it goes from I'm looking at the rearview mirror. I'm checking this out. He almost head ons another car, and yeah. his eyes get the widest you will ever see. Like <laughs> we're gonna die. But what does he do next? He goes right back to the rearview mirror. And why does he do that? Because he wants to see if she noticed. <laughs> it's kind of like, dude, yes, yeah. she noticed. Yeah. Because if the whole car moved. Like, <laughs> right. If there's ever a question, just just assume Black Widow noticed. I mean, so this is like, just assume that she knows, like, because she always knows. But I got to tell you that that is the part of this scene. Every time I see it that makes me laugh is, is that... Oh, did she notice? Yeah, yeah, she noticed. Yeah. <laughs> and, the thing is, and she and and the thing is that she's such a pro that it's just like, hey, like watch the road. Like, how, about, how about you not kill us? Like, yeah. <laughs> so she says, I'm gonna enter the facility and take down the target. Watch the road. Okay. <laughs> this is where this gets better. Is that he's like, I got it. I got it. I got like the double. Uh, yeah. I, got, double I, got, I, got I got it. I got it. Yeah, like and you yeah, no, no, I'm, like, fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> okay. But then it switches. This is right before the cut. You see her then lay down and her leg yeah. go up. Yeah. And you can see it in his face like, look at the road, look at the yeah. road, look at the road. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he ne- the, I, I guess it's it's a little juvenile, but I got to tell you, John Favreau makes this scene work. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, it, it is, you know, it's like it, it, there's there is some gross sexism in Iron Man 2. Yeah, and of this course. Is not yes. That. This is just no, like, this, a, yeah, that, absolutely. Because, cause, you know, it's like, obviously, he he's the butt of the joke in this case. Like, she right. didn't. So uh, then we cut back to the the, the chase. So it's still on. So Tony Roy. So uh, actually what you're seeing here, the plates. So like what the, the CGI over is actually Jersey. Like yeah. uh, John Favreau talked about it in the commentary track he actually sent a crew to new jersey to get these this footage so all nice. the stuff you're seeing I mean, he didn't actually get to shoot it but it is actually specifically of new jersey so this isn't like la pretending to be new jersey until they get underneath and then that we're back to <laughs> los angeles because all the cars and stuff are back there but uh this uh idea this this uh, the cars like that so the, it's, it's a pretty good gag so the First, you see Tony flying over the top of the the road, and all the people in the, in the car looking up at him. And then he goes underneath it, and we see like basically like a long parking lot. Since like there's all these cars parked underneath there, uh, and Iron Man races past, and then we hear one car alarm go off, and then War Machine and all the drones come by, and then all the car alarms go off. Well, this is actually not a John Favreau thing. This is a Jenny Teratovsky thing because uh, we talked about this earlier on and I was said it was going to come back and it's here we are back again. So Jenny Teratovsky is the uh, one of the co-creators of Powerpuff Girls. He also did worked on Dexter's Lab, Samurai Jack. Uh, his big show right now is Primal. I think that's still I mean it's it's available. I'm not sure if it's still currently running. Um, but also if you're a huge Star Wars fan, uh, he did the original Star Wars Clone Wars. So when they oh, did the original yeah. sort of really stylized animation shorts that were on Cartoon Network. Love those. Yeah, they're great. They had some really, really yes. cool stuff. I, 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 Dirge is actually came from there. Um, right. That's one of the things that's I think it's currently 
out of continuity. It's it's considered a Star Wars Legends. <laughs> right. Uh, but he was the first one to do like a really cool action thing of Clone Wars and like show the clones as sort of tough commandos. Oh yeah. Uh, and uh, so I mean it was he, and also oh and and most importantly I guess in terms of box office he is the director of the three Hotel Transylvania movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the time he was an animator working there and so just through Hollywood connection stuff he got in touch with. Uh, John Favreau, and he actually did a bunch of storyboards for Iron Man 2. And so one, this is one of the gags he came up with was this idea of they fly by and then the next group flies by and it sets off all the car alarms. And so they actually come straight from the storyboard. John Favreau loved it and then you know ended up putting it right into the movie and ILM animated over the top of it. So uh, this is just one of those those cool things of like cool, creative people working together. And this is not the end of their collaboration in this movie either. Oh, Okay. Just on this, though, this obviously yeah. talks about the car alarms we talked about at the beginning right. of the, the opening. Yeah. How pr- I think this is fully practical. Is am, yeah, do you think well, I'm I, think off? I, would, I would say, I would say, I would, I don't know if they, it, they would probably, the sound is probably not, but I would say the light is because all the cars shake as well. Yeah, no. I, okay. So I have a theory and okay. I tried to find this, couldn't find anything on this. Yeah. You yeah, see yeah. when the first one goes by and, and when it's Iron Man. And like we've talked about this before, it's good to have the different color colorizing of their uh, trails because yeah. you can see, you can clearly make out Iron Man and Rhodey and then all of the Air Force drones, yeah. the yellow and the blue. When he goes by the first one, you see the car move and then you see the alarm go on. And then when they go by, you see almost all of them. I think there are people laying down in each one of these cars. I, I bet you that is the case as well. I was thinking, I, I think was looking, that's what I was they looking did. at this, thinking, what would be the cheapest, easiest way to do this? And I'm like, yes, yeah, you, you get like a, you get like forty extras in the walkie talkies or like a bullhorn because it's no sound, and exactly. you just go three, two, yeah. one, whoosh, and then like everybody <laughs> just like they trigger the lights and then they just rock back and forth, laying down in the car, and it's a it's I'm a two second kidding. shot, and I bet you that's no. how they did it. I think that's. What what they did because yeah. <laughs> i'm like how would you you wouldn't cg this I no mean, and you wouldn't like wire up every car for a two second no. shot you're not well, gonna and go you gotta have and, the motion and you gotta yeah. see the vibration of the car right. so like yeah what's the easiest way not, to do that right yeah. exactly and, and <laughs> having the animators animate every single one of those cars is also not gonna do it for like we said for a two second shot that's not uh. plot relevant uh, for a I gag, hope that's, you know? I hope that's the case. I know, that's I awesome. know. If you were one of the people in those cars, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you're you gotta let us in know. LA, and I was like, please contact the show and let us know. I would really like to know that. Uh, but it's a it's a good gag, uh, and so then we see them as they're they're flying over all of these cars, and this is great because it's a nice way to have some action and some carnage without worrying about people. Because like these are you know they're abandoned cars or whatever, so like we see um, they, some some uh, they're going to take some damage, um, right. So uh, we, we we have also some shots here of Ivan furiously typing. You know, <laughs> nothing more two thousands than like angry typing. Well, and we and we see a great shot of the Air Force drones. Um, a really nice close up action shot of them in flight firing the back mounted machine gun that we've talked about that they're equipped right. with. Yeah. And one thing I really like about this is, uh, not just seeing how they're they're optimized for firing in flight. Yeah. But how their drone heads are completely now moved up. Uh, uh, 90 degrees yeah, yeah, and, flight and position. They're, they're like they're locked in a flight position which is yeah. really cool looking we talked about tracer rounds in incredible hulk right yes okay oh, so yeah. that, like so we don't need to go over that that's like that's why you see the everyone everyone's aware of why you see the sort of streaks of yellow when they're firing oh well in case they're in case they're not why, oh, why okay. are, yeah how can I you say, see? i don't i don't have the 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 actual math on this but basically the tracer rounds are uh, are are non lethal phosphorus rounds that are put inside of uh, the things Be- basically because on these chain guns these high machine guns the bullets are coming out so fast that the pilots can't see where they're going they can only see what's being destroyed so they put in every I'm gonna say every thousand rounds or whatever they have probably less than that uh, they have a a phosphorus round that basically that creates a streak so that they can see where it is that they're aiming their cannons at. So that's why you. That's why, and it's a it's a nice you know film thing too because then you can then we get to see sort of where it is. So that's why it's like it's it's red. So that's why it's not a constant stream of fire. It's basically just every you know every once in a while you'll see like a a yellow streak come out of there thing to let the it's the aiming. Now obviously, would you need that for a drone? No, not really. But I guess if it, if it is a drone being piloted by someone like like a like what we consider a traditional drone, then sure right. you would need that because you would need to to see where it was going. But for a robot, I guess you wouldn't have to. It looks it looks really cool. It does, yeah. yeah. And it looks really cool. And uh, then we have Tony. Tony does a, a really uh, tight pivot 
and we see two of the Air Force drones collide with one another. Yep, and then and they I, come back I, to Ivan's screen. He sees them right. like go offline. So they're just, so already we're learning that they are not quite as maneuverable as Tony is, which is going to be important. In my notes, I think I said one of the Tie Fighters hits the other Tie Fighter, <laughs> and they crash. Wow! 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 Need some Ben Burt sound effects dropped in right there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, but, uh, Ivan certainly has figured out what Tony's up to at this point. So he, we see a, a group of the air force drones changes direction. They all of a sudden they, they go off. So Rhodey says, listen, listen, a pack just peeled off. They're headed back to the expo. And Tony says, got it. But he has other things to worry about right now, because then one of the air force drones opens its, uh, one of its arm cannons and we see a missile locked into position. And that's where the minute ends. Yeah, some neat stuff. Uh, we get to see a lot of um, visual cues about this this pack dro- uh, being broken off. We see visuals on Ivan's screen. We see it on Rhodey's uh, heads-up display within yep. his helmet. Yep. You physically see them break off. I mean, it's telegraphed. You understand that a group of them is breaking off. And then I really love, if you if you stop this and look at the, the scene of these little air-to-air missiles popping out, you can actually see the hand. These are basically gauntlet-mounted uh, uh, air-to-air missiles on the Air Force drones because yeah. you can see the fingers, and then you see this like in that gauntlet area that's on the top part of their uh, forearm. Uh, this is where this is coming out. It's a nice effect. I love all the mechanical effects of these drones. Yeah, yeah. The, the drones are really well designed, and I like how uh, how different they're going to be. Like We're going to see in the next couple minutes that when what, another drone shows up, like you know where it's from and so you know sort of what the capabilities of it are so you kind of right. have a different as opposed to like a battle droid let's say right. uh that's basically just like it's a robot thing with a gun like yeah like you, you can see that there are different styles to these and they all have different capabilities that are used in different ways so uh you know again kudos to ivan like he actually you know in, yeah. he came up he came up with this whole plan in like a week or less <laughs> you know yeah, and like and tactically is maneuvering these around that clearly he's played some command and conquer He's <laughs> clearly. Well, I mean, well, once he gets to the Tiberium, and then right. you know, right? Exactly. Fine. Or yeah, or maybe he's more of an Age of <laughs> Empires guy because then he can make Russia dominant oh, force in the world. You're... No, Command and Conquer generals. I think I think Command and Conquer. He seems more like yeah, a Command and Conquer. Command and Conquer. Totally. Command and Conquer. Red Alert. There you go. There See, you... Red Alert was Red that the Alert. one with Tim Curry? Yeah, Tim Curry so. did the. Yes. Li- okay, yeah. Rivals on the. I, never mind. We just we just went into it. <laughs> <thing. laughs> you want to play Command and Conquer Rivals? Yeah, that's say, a great game on your say, phone. If, if you're a, if you're a Tim Curry fan from his many many roles, go to the YouTube, look up oh. Command and Conquer Tim Curry, and just watch a actor just completely unbound. Like yes, basically like <laughs> they're like go full on. Like if you if you. If you've seen, you know, Rocky Horror, that's one thing. If you've seen it, if you've seen Clue, you've seen Tim Curry go big, but you've never seen him go this big. <laughs> it's a glorious sight, oh, as, as only Tim Curry can do. It really is. That was a game for the ages. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, we've talked, we've talked about Star Wars. We've talked about video games. We've oh. talked about Tim Curry. Like, I don't, I don't even know what to do. Like, I wish we could continue on talking about these things, but we can't. We only have so much time in an episode. But oh, yeah. if you want to continue the conversation about this, I think I know a good place where you can do that. It's called Discord. We have a very own Discord server. If you go to Dexter.com, scroll down to the bottom to the Discord, click on the link there, join our form. It's free. Uh, we have our very own Marvel Movie Minute. We actually have two now. Uh, <laughs> but it'd be old news to you, but it's new news to us. There's right. a Marvel movie just talking about general Marvel kind of stuff, and then one specifically about Iron Man 2 and all uh, the, the madness you've been listening to for the last uh, 101 minutes. Um, so hop in there, talk about Command & Conquer, talk about Tim Curry, talk about Star Wars, talk about Jenny Tarotovsky, like any of those things. We're available to talk about all of it, uh, and we'd love to have you. Uh, so that's it. So that's, that's the end of our minute now. Uh, when we uh, come back from minute 102, uh, we're going to find out what the connection is between Iron Man 2 and the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. So you don't want to miss that. Enough said. Bye.